Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. In this video, we are going to learn the detailed works on how to prepare the width and tidal input file. First of all, we are going to choose a coastal area which is prone to natural disasters such as storm, hurricane and typhoon so that we can observe the drastic changes of the wave and tides. For example, typhoon Likima that has happened in Zijiang, China in 2019. According to the news from BBC, the typhoon leukemia has developed into a super typhoon which was classified as a category 4 of typhoon. The news shows the predicted path of typhoon leukemia at the coastal area. As you can see, the typhoon was predicted to hit the Zijiang area on 10th August. So we will conduct a simulation on that 3D to analyze the impact of typhoon leukemia at Zijiang area. This simulation will help us to analyze the wave height, wave direction, and wave period to better understand the typhoon's effect to the Zijiang area. Moving on to the next step is to download the data from the ERA5. So, ERA5 is actually a comprehensive climate reanalysis data set that is accessible online. Uh, so, the users can log in and download data to analysis. So, just search for ERA5 hour data on single levels from 1940 to the present in the CDS website. So, download the data, we're going to click this section and then the product type will be reanalysis. For the variable, I'm going to focus on three, which are the mean wave period, significant high wave, and the mean wave direction. Next, selecting the year of the typhoon occur, which in 2019, on the month of August. For selecting days, it is recommended to choose before, during, and after the typhoon so that we can analyze the changes of wave and tidals. We can choose any specific time we want. So in my data, I want the data to show every two hours. Moving on to the geographical area section. So we are going to download data for specific coastal areas only, which is Zijiang, China. So it is important for us to know what is the coordinate for Zijiang, China. So we are going to use uh, Google Earth Pro and then, and then search for Zijiang, China. As you can see here, I have already pinpointed the specific subregion area that I wanted to analyze. This map shows the coastal area of Zijiang, China, where the typhoon occurred. So those maps were actually labeled as upper right, upper left, lower left, lower right. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine our subregion based on the coordinates. So when we move the cursor to the upper right marks, the coordinate will be displayed at the bottom. So this is how we identify the focus subregion. So the northern boundary is at 33 degrees north. So and then check the southern boundary at the, is at the 29 degrees north and the western boundary is at 119 degree east. The eastern boundary is at 124 degrees. So now we have select our subregion. Then we're going to download the format in grid file and then submit the form. And then wait for a while while the data is being processed. Now click download. To open the data, we're going to use Quick Plot in Depth 3D. Insert the file downloaded earlier. Open the file and then choose. Grid file. As you can see here, these are the three variables that we choose earlier in the era file. Now let's see how the data is visualized. So select all, quick animate. 
So we see is animation provide a representation of with high movement over time. So we see on August, a few days before the typhoon occur, uh, the wave high are noticeably low, indicating calm sea. But fast forward to the August time, when the typhoon strikes, you will witness a dramatic change in the wave high. So these changes is reflected because of the intense of the typhoon, because of the powerful winds and the energy transferred to the ocean surface. But in 13 August, as the typhoon moved away, the wave hive are gradually decreased. That's it. The animation before show us the whole sub-region area that we choose. Now we want to select an area specifically near the Zhejiang coastline. Click show or hide the grid view. Next, insert the world shoreline file. Low shoreline long boundary file so that we can identify the coastal area. So the maps will show the world shoreline and this red in color grid is actually the sub region we choose before. Then click select point and choose the nearest coast of the Jiang area. So now we're going to analyze the wave changes in the Zhejiang area during typhoon. First, we're going to observe the significant wave high analysis. So according to the graph, we can see that the wave behavior in response to the typhoon leukemia. During the brief typhoon condition, which is 7 and 8 August, we see that the wave high was stable, fluctuating between 0 0.5 meters and 1 meters. And then uh, on the 10th August, where the typhoon leukemia hit the Ziajang area, causing a sharp increase in wave high to over 2 meters. So this rise was due to the typhoon's powerful winds and the atmospheric pressure changes, transferring energy to the ocean and creating large waves. But after the typhoon has passed, wave high gradually returned to normal, around 0 0.5 to 1 meters as the sea has come down and uh, the storm energy has dissipated. So right now, we're going to focus on the mean wave period. According to the graph, the, the wave period before the typhoon is stable, is calm, fluctuating between 3 to 3.5 seconds, which has less energetic wave. But it starts to increase from 8 to 9, approaching 5 seconds, showing the influence of the approaching typhoon as a stronger wind creates more energetic wave. But during 10 August, which is the peak of the typhoon, the mean wave period peaked at 5 seconds, reflecting the maximum energy transfer from the typhoon to the ocean. After the typhoon, after the typhoon passed away, wave period dropped back around 3.5 seconds on the 11th August. Interestingly, wave period increased again above 4.5 seconds shortly after the 11th August, likely due to lingering effect of the typhoon. But by the August 12th, the wave period returned to the normal levels, indicating the ocean has settled back to its usual state. Lastly, the mean wave direction. According to the graph, the pre-typhoon condition, which is 7th to 9th August, the mean wave direction ranged from 100 to 60 degrees, indicating coming from east to southern east, which are very normal during weather condition. But in the 10th of August, as the typhoon Likima approached, there is a significant change in the wave direction. The graph shows a sharp increase in the wave direction to 240 degrees. This dramatic shift indicates that the wave begin coming from the west to southern west. So these changes is a direct result of the powerful cyclonic winds associated with the typhoon that alter the usual wave pattern and direction. The wave direction continued to shift, peaking at nearly 260 degrees on the 11th and 12th August. So this peak indicates that the wave were coming from a more westerly direction, which almost completely opposite to the pre-typhoon condition. But after the peak on the 12th of August, uh, the wave direction gradually began to decline. So uh, it slowly returned to the more typical wave direction as the effect of typhoon diminished. 
after analyze three different drafts, it can be seen they are all interpolated to each other. During typhoon, both wave height and period increase, showing that the wave grew larger and carry more energy to the powerful wind. And also the wave height and wave direction during the typhoon, as the wind direction changed, the wave height increased because of the wind transfer more energy directly to the wave, causing them to grow taller. Also with wave period and wave direction, where during the typhoon, as the wave directed as, as the wave direction shifted, the wave period increased, showing that the wave from different direction merged, creating longer period wave. So the interrelation during the typhoon is the wind influencer, where the strong winds during typhoon make wave bigger, longer, and change their direction. And then energy transfer, where winds transfer more energy to wave during typhoon, making them taller and longer lasting. And fetch and duration, where during typhoon, winds blow over large distance for a long time, leading to bigger and longer waves. So that's all from us. Thank you so much.